Hello again, this is our Chapter 5 video. We're going to give you a quick introduction to maps, sets, and a bit of revision on lists. And then we're going to improve our tech support system by matching words to responses. And for this, we're going to have to tokenize our strings and create a set of strings. In a later video, we're then actually going to do the matching of words to specific responses. In this video, we're looking at just creating a set of strings from the input from the user, which is currently a single string sentence. So, um, just a bit of revision, really. Uh, as you know, there's a number of collection types. There is collection types of type list, of type set, and type map. Now, we're going to look later on and see that um, when we have subtypes and types, we have uh, something called inheritance, and that's going to be discussed later on. But I want you to ignore inheritance for the time being and just focus on the implementation of these collection types. When we've used lists, we've used the array list subtype, so we've used our array list. If you can remember with an array list, one of the features of the array list is it's an ordered set of elements which go in a particular order, and the order being the index, so uh, index 0, index 1, etc., etc. When we look at sets, we don't have this ordering, so we don't have any index in sets. There's simply a collection, an unordered list, which cannot include duplicates. What we're going to show in this video is the hash set is what we're going to use, but there are other different set types, but the one we're going to use is a hash set. In a later video, we're going to look at maps a little bit into a little bit more detail, but for the time being, it's just good to understand that uh, mapping is uh, a way of mapping keys to specific values. So what we're going to do is we're going to map words that the user has said, and we're going to map that to a specific response. Uh, an example of a map is a phone book. So, for example, if you put in the name of someone, then you should get out, out the number. So that's a mapping where the key is the name and the value is the number. As discussed, though, we're going to focus on sets in this particular video. Uh, and we're going to focus on changing some of our tech support system. So what I've done in order to show you this working is I've created a little demo class called set demo. So what I'm going to do, I just want to go through this first. So first of all we need to have the import statement and it's in the java.util package. I then created a single field called my set uh, and this is going to be a type hash set of type string. So in the same way which we define an array list, we create a um, with which is a parameterized type where we need to specify the type of object that's going to be stored. That's exactly what we do with a hash set. So we're going to store a type object, so we need a, a type of a type string object. So we need to define that uh, appropriately. In the in the constructor itself, we then uh, do the assignment statement, which gets our my set object up and running. If you have a look in the hash set class uh, on the API, you'll see that there's a method in there called add. So what we're going to do is we're going to say my set dot add, and then we're going to add the string one into the um, into the hash set. So we're going to do that three times, my set dot add two, and my set dot add three. Now previously, if we'd have done that in the array list, we would get a return uh, if we went through um, a for each loop, as we're going to do in the output or set method at the bottom there. If we did that in an array list, we would in fact get it out in order, so one, two, three. Um, so this is a simple for loop here where we're simply going to say, uh, using a temporary string called element um, within the hash set my set, um, we're then going to system.out.println of element. So again, in an array list, that would be in order, but in a hash set, that will not be in order. Sometimes, luckily, it's in order but it's not always in order, and do not rely on it being in order either. So let's try that. So if we output all, one, two, three, I will, oh no, it is wrong, yeah, two, one, three. So as expected, that's come out in a different order. Occasionally you will come out that it is in the right order. So that's our set demo. So. Let's have a look, see now how we can implement a set within our tech support program. So first of all, we need to compare each word as opposed to looking at the entire string. So for example, if you've written, I, my computer has crashed, 
then we want to investigate each of those words and see if we can match those words up to a specific response. A sentence is essentially one word or one string, and what we want, what we want to do is tokenize that. And tokenize is used in various aspects of IT, and effectively means split into tokens. And the tokens we're talking about here are going to be string tokens. So we're going to split that sentence, that string sentence, to a number of tokens, which are going to turn out to be um, words of type string. Um, to do this and to store these individual words, we we don't need to have any order in them as we're just comparing them. So a set can be used to store the words. Um, as you've seen previously, we've when we've got input from the user, we've returned a string, but now we're going to return a hash set, um, which has got a set of these strings, which we then, we can then compare later. So here is our new input reader class. So everything is the same in the input reader class, except the uh, the get input method has changed. So the first thing that's changed is the return type. So the return type is now hash set of type string, whereas previously it was string. All this piece here you should recognize and be comfortable with. So we've still got the cursor in place, and we're still getting an input from the user and called input line. Uh, it's using the reader.nextLine, which you can remember is a type scanner class. Uh, and if you want to um, revision on that, then look into previous videos. What we're going to do then is effectively the same pass on the sentence. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an array of type string and we're going to call it word array. Um, we're then going to use the split method. If you look up in the, in the string uh, class on the API, you'll see that there's a method called split. That method takes a single parameter and you have to specify what you want to split the string up with. In our case, people normally write with spaces, so we're going to split it up with spaces. What that will do is then it will create an array of type string full of words um, which are from the sentence, and that's going to be called word array. The next line we're going to define and uh, assign our temporary hash set, which is going to be returned um, to, to the user or to the program. So at the moment, we're going to call that words. So what we do then is we use the for each loop to go through our array called um, our array of type string called word array. Um, we're going to use our temporary variable, which is going to be word. Then we're going to use the words variable, which is our hash set now, where we go words dot add. So again, if we look in the hash set class and the API, you'll see there's a method there called add. That takes a parameter of the type which we're going to add, which in this case is our word. Um, and then that's going to add that. So from our normal array, we're going to take all of the words from our normal array, all of the strings from our normal array, and put them into our hash set. Finally, we're going to return our hash set. As we've seen, we've specified return a hash set of the string. That's exactly what we're going to do. So that will then, rather than returning a single string, we're going to return a hash set with a number of different strings in which we can then compare these values later. So that's sort of step one on this process of comparing words. We've got the words, we've isolated each one, so the next job and the next video is going to be to map those specific words to responses. I'll uh, see you then.